Hey, hello everyone. This is Rudolph Okonkwo. This is our first, first episode of Have Your Say. It's a program where we give you an opportunity to have your say on the important story of the day. And of course, today is a wonderful day, <laughs> a wonderful day in Nigeria. And, um, and I want to uh, welcome everybody who is joining us. Um, I'm coming to you from New York. And I have a special guest, a friend of mine, the editor-in-chief and publisher of Africa and Abroad USA, uh, uh, Alex Kaba. Alex Kaba, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So, so today is a wonderful day. We are going to, the nature of this show is we want to let people speak up and say whatever is on their mind. Uh, but we're going to talk about what happened in Anambra State today. Of course, we know what happened today. The uh, new governor took over uh, in the person of uh, uh, Saludo. And uh, the old governor, um, you know, was on his way to, to Houston and got arrested by the EFCC. Now, also at the event, uh, the, the swearing in events, uh, the wife of the former governor received a slap from the, um, the wife of uh, Emeka Odomegbojuku. So let's start by playing that video. Let's show for those who, if you are, you know, maybe you live in space, you have not seen that video. We will show the video now, and after that, we will begin the conversation. You can join us. You know, this is something very interactive. We want to make sure that anybody who wants to join the conversation can join us. So uh, we play the video, and then. Wow. So, Alex Kaba, what's your take on the events of today in Anambra? <laughs> it's very, very shameful, man. For this, a bell, a It's not very dignifying of a of a first lady. Even though I heard that she has had those traits when she was in government house for eight years, mm. she was probably one of those. Uh, you had what? What did you hear? That she has always been slapping uh, people, an oppressor, all those uh, market women type of uh, lady. Mm. But uh, even if she was educated, it didn't show on her. Mm. That's why she was the intimidator or what they call the aggressor. Mm. She was the one who went to to greet people and went to the face of Bianca mm. and not teasing her and all that. Whether why is she why why is she at the Abga meeting or not. Mm. So it means that uh, Bianca is, uh, Bianca is a. Uh, it's not the aggressor. It's just she was just reacting by slapping the former first lady of Anambra State. Mm. So, uh, so that's how the we should uh, uh, apportion the blame. I see oh. that uh, uh, Chief Bernard uh, Bernard don't have. Okay, yeah, yeah. We are going to let people who joined us to talk and have their say, and we continue uh, to hear your views, uh, Alex. So, um, uh, if what, what's his name? Is it Chief? I don't want to call a chief uh, by regular name. What's your name? Um, tell us your name and where you are joining us from and your view on the topic. Um. Anyway, my name is Dr. Emejuru Bernard Akarugo. Akarugo. I, I live in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, New I'm York. Joining from Brooklyn, New York. Oh, good, good. And um, actually, I was watching live the event, you know, because um, uh, uh, Professor Chukuma Tsoludo is a. Uh, a dynamic fellow, and um, we are very happy. Majority of uh, Easterners and Nigerians are happy that he secured that position as governor of Anambra State. And we tuned in to watch the um, 
uh, swearing in ceremony. And mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, that incident occurred. And if you watch the video, you find out that um, Dr. Mrs. Obianya actually stood up from her seat and went to where Bianca was sitting and was exchanging uh, derogatory words to her, probably. Mm. And Bianca reacted uh, extensively to that level of uh, a hot slap. Let me, let me stop you now. Wait, wait. You called her Dr. Mrs. Where did she get the doctor that you attached to the name? Um, actually, that was what I, what I picked up from the report. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see, if you see a medical doctor or an academic <laughs> doctor or an honorary doctor, I don't know. Okay, That's okay. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. But do you feel that do you feel that this incident overshadowed um the, the speech of uh, uh, the new governor? Uh, no, 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 it never, it never did. In fact, I like the manner and the way the security um and other uh, guests intervened and um, you know queried the situation. And if you watch Obiyan himself, Obiyan was sitting quietly when the wife came back to the seat where he was and uh, sat down. She he drew her attention to what's going on with the ceremony to put her attention on the ceremony. Mm -hmm. You know, I like the maturity he displayed. Mm -hmm. He never overreacted or tried to uh, overshadow Bianca or whatever. Being mm -hmm. his wife, mm -hmm. being uh, that he being his wife or whatever, mm -hmm. he overreacted to the uh, uh, the provocation that caused the slap. Mm -hmm. So I admired what Bianca did. You know, you cut on your wife to sit down. Do you think it's, it's a, as a result of the sitting arrangement? Because it appears as if um, um, Obiano's wife was kept far away from Obiano and uh, Bianca was closer to. Uh, did you see the sitting arrangement? Is there anything? Uh, no, I didn't see that because if you look at the, where Obiano was sitting, there was an empty seat probably for Charles Soluda and the wife. Mm. Then before Bianca sits. Okay. And then she was sitting on the far right of uh, of Bianca. So mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what happened while she was sitting there. Some said she just came late or something. I don't know. You know, most of these things we pick on the internet. Mm -hmm. Most of them we don't really have to rely on them. All right, Akarugo, stay, stay there. Let's let's get another voice involved in the conversation. I'm seeing Kenny from UK. Let's add him on the on the stream. Kenny, can you put on your your camera? We want to see you. Uh, unless you are not dressed, then please don't put on your camera. But <laughs> uh, but why why we waiting for Kenny to come on, put on his camera? Um, uh, Alice Kaba, it's not just what happened to uh, Biang, um, what happened to um, the wife of uh, Obiano that we're talking about. Obiano himself got arrested at the Lagos airport today while he was on his way to uh, to back to the United States to Houston. What is your take on that? My take is that uh, Obiano. Uh, was playing with uh, fate. He has had many of his aides arrested over uh, financial misappropriation, which were really well documented. And uh, uh, as soon as he loses immunity, he will be arrested. So the fact that they didn't arrest him at the swearing uh, ceremonies uh, venue does not uh, give him the right that he's going to travel to America on the same day that he has he has uh, he has he handed over power and mm. lost his immunity mm. even if he wanted to escape <laughs> because when he he handed all the documents of anambra state uh governance mm. to the incoming governor so yes, he, mm. he did that he said so we were thinking he was going to escape through the nadeko route mm. he thought he would go through uh being the republic and escape. how can a big man like that go through in a republic you know no what i mean is that he, uh, if if you look at the a former governor in the southwest, mm. uh, they were trying to arrest him, and what he did was uh, he handed over power mm. on the night before the swearing in of the new governor, and escaped mm. abroad. Mm. The, by the time he come back, he came back another two years. The case has died. Mm. So I was thinking that he was going to escape through the Republic yesterday, because you cannot be saying that. Uh, why is he? Uh, why, why? What are they going to do to me? And he goes to Mutala Mohammed Airport. That is the most visible, the most star attraction airport in Nigeria. So if you want people to arrest you, that is where you will go. I don't know <laughs> if it was just try to uh, go so that they can arrest him or, or they can put him because I don't know how he thinks that he, now that he has lost his immunity, he think he can escape, enter a plane, everybody will be looking at you and escape to America. <laughs> Thank you very much. Someone wrote, uh, Don Obi wrote, uh, Obiano was thinking 
how he will escape EFCC. That was why he never said anything. Um, so if, if you want to join us in the conversation, um, just just come into the studio. We we posted on social media our, 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 our um the, the, the link to the to the studio. Um, let's go back to you, uh, uh, Akarugo. So, what do you think about uh, Obiano's uh, arrest? Um, Were you expecting it? To me, yes. I I not just like as uh, Kaba rightly said. You know, when you have too many cupboards, in, too many skeletons in your cupboard, anything can happen. And kudos to EFCC for swiftly, swiftly arresting him. <laughs> uh, uh, let him go and answer his questions. Mm. Let him go and prove his uh, ending. Let him go and prove mm. himself uh, not guilty. Mm. In his hard time, our Nigerian elected officer, officials do away with whatever they want to do and get off. Get mm. off their Mm. And nobody will uh, hold them responsible. Mm. We still have to start holding them responsible so mm. that those ones coming next 2023 mm. should know that it's not as easy. You can't just come and uh, embezzle money in cocoa and unquote and go free with it. Mm. So I like that development and I want I will want to see how it plays out mm. in the future. Okay, thank you. Alice Kaba, you know, looking at the history of the EFCC and their performance in terms of uh, all these cases against former governors, do we have any hope? Is this, you know, because this is like almost all of them get arrested and they are freed in the next, uh, or the case is stopped in court. And what, what do you think about this? Is this one different? Well, what I think is that uh, the FCC has been a big disappointment. Uh, what any designing governor would have known that no governor has ever been convicted. What they do is that they, they will arrest them to embarrass them. And then uh, some people in the EFCC will get rich because they will collect money at the back. And uh, some lawyers too will get rich by being retained as their attorney. Then they will get grant bail and uh, the case will be uh, will be in in in, uh, in areas like it's happening to Oji Kalu. Oji Kalu was a governor for eight years. They have arrested him, and uh, it was the case was in uh, in in the cooler for a long time. And he came again and they convicted him. Now Supreme Court has already threw a, a, even though the guy was already serving the tenor, the Supreme Court threw a wedge and they released him today. Now Oji Kalu is boasting now he wants to become governor. He wants to be president. And he has already squeezed Abia State. So, so much money with all the evidence that was used to convict him. But today he says he wants to be the uh, president of Nigeria. So that's right. that, that, he will have looked at everything and said that, hey, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me? They will arrest me and make so much noise. And that's it. All right. So, Alex Kaba, stand by. Um, we have. Um... We have two people that joined us. I will, I will get to them. But I, I want to say that uh, if you join us, please turn on your camera. If the camera is not on, I will take you out from the studio. Our studio can only take six people. We can't take more than six people. So we actually need people. So um, when you speak, then you leave us, and then we get more people involved. Uh, I can think. I can uh, is. Uh, I can. Are you there? So I can uh, tell us where you you're joining us from, and and um, what is your take on the news from today? Go ahead. Um, my brother, I agree to you. I'm calling from London. Okay. And yeah, I was watching the the whole ceremony, and clearly you can see that Obiano is not comfortable. And we all know that something like this is waiting for him. But um, I just wanted to ask, like. You know, there is nothing specific that they are accusing him of. Well, uh, he I, I, embezzled money, but who's money? Federal money or state money? Just like James Ibori, what happened when he embezzled state money, right? Mm. He took it overseas, the UK government does this and did that. They locked him and then they released the money. And what happened? It was returned to the state. What has the federal government got to do with the state governor who is... In fact, he, he really worked hard in Farnambra State, you know, yes... He took a lot of money, but trust me, he he really worked for a number of states, especially that effort. He opened for a number of states. All right. He promised it and he kept it. Okay. What has the federal government got against him specifically? I don't understand. Okay, Ikena, thank you so much. We, we will have to let you go. Uh, there are people who are trying to join us. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. Alex Kaba will address your question, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, Alex Kaba, um, can you? 
can you address yeah, what i see there is that uh, you have to realize that uh just like in the uk and and the america they have federal agencies that coordinate for the whole state for the whole country actually mm. so we don't have such a an agency in nigeria where all the states have efcc so there must be one agency that can coordinate the whole uh, states in nigeria like the fbi in america like the efcc in nigeria so but what are the money it's an Anambra state security vote that is sold, or it's a federal government. Don't forget that majority of the money that uh, is going to all the states comes from the federal government as allocation. So there is really only for maybe about two states, which are River State and Lagos State, which have a bigger portion of their revenue coming from within. Internal, mm. internally generated revenue. Mm. The rest, you have to realize, come from the federal government. That means the remaining 34 states. Mm. Majority of their revenue, or of their income, comes from the federal government. Mm. So when you say that it's a state government money, you have to realize that in Anambra State, the allocation is higher than whatever they generated in, internally. Mm. So that's not really a big point. You have to realize that majority of the money really came from the federal government, and it was well documented that he come up, he went and cashed all these billions security vote within three days of being sworn in as a president of, as governor of Anambra State. Mm. This, this is a documented. These are not things that are mere allegation. They are mm. documented facts. The name of the banks, the amount withdrawn, withdrawn from all these banks were there. Okay, yeah. all right, Alexa, hold on, stay with me because you'll be answering some of these questions. Uh, you are smarter than me. Ifediora, uh, welcome to uh, welcome to the show, and tell us where you're calling from, where you joined us from, and um, what you think about events of today. All right, thank you, Doctor Damages. Um, I'm in Edmonton, Canada. Okay. Um, with regards to the events of today, uh, well, it's <laughs> everything played out there, and um, we least expected what happened, what happened at events. I would say maybe um, some people would say that they're happy it happened that the way it happened. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, Saludo wanted it to be a low-key event, something that would last within um, just within half an hour and everyone goes, everyone goes their way. But unfortunately, something else came up and it became the talk of the day. And <laughs> that's just the way it is. But on the side of um, um, former Governor William Bianos wife, I think she overstepped her bounds. She shouldn't have gone to uh, Bianco knows um, um, where she was because they are, they are, they've been having this face off between them and it's been so. And I think, I don't think Bianca was invited there by the husband. I think it was Soludo who invited her to the event. I'm not so sure. I'm not sure. But I think, I think it was, it's that, that's what happened. So perhaps she was surprised to have seen her there. What are you doing here? Why did you come here? You know, but she should have maintained her cool, knowing that, hey, you are no longer in, you, are no, you don't longer have the control anymore. Calm down. This is someone else's, uh, the military will say, this is my parade. This is someone else's parade. I'm not your parade. You know, mm. but she just, perhaps she just couldn't bear what was going on and, and went um, to touch her physically like people who, who they said and, you know, everything all went. But that's by the way, I was on some Twitter today going through what people were posting there. Someone said, last week was women's, a women's week and they had this slogan, break the bias. So someone said this love was break the bias. So someone <laughs> 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 said on, on, on the comment here that it's a farewell clap, you know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, let's, let's go to Chike and hear his view. Chike, um, welcome. Okay, uh, two things. One is that um, if EFCC arrested them, any money they recover goes to the federal government, not to the state. Um, the one that went to Edo is because something oh, happened yeah. in Britain. It's what returned for, to them from Britain. But is, if the FCC then went after the, the money goes to the federal government, to them, you can keep the phone. So the money goes to the federal oh. government. Um, Saying that the will not worked hard for Anambra State, States, it's a fallacy. He stole everything, taxed business people to the extent of people going out of business and, cut, and cutting the money over to here, himself and the chief of staff. Um, so whatever, if he did not know that he would be arrested, then he's a very stupid man. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, I think he can. He can. He can come back, and you have to say something. Go ahead. Uh, no, let's just step back a little bit. We all know how Nigerian politicians operate, right? None of them are innocent. But again, you have to some sometimes you just have to balance the shit a little bit, you know. Yes, he cannot please everybody, but he tried. Not not on security issue, but infra infrastructure, he tried. When you talk about people buying go taking money and buying this and buying that. If you come to London now, bro, I, I can tell you, what is your president now? You're not in London. They all come here. They all buy stuff. All of them buy stuff here. But sometimes when somebody's doing something for that, I'm not, I'm not a fan of Obia, no, but I'm just wondering why why must it always have to be like this? If you don't dance to someone's stone, then you become a target. Mm. And there are a lot of ex-presidents, ex-ministers, ex-ministers, that embedded their lot with bullion van and stuff. Why are they not arrested? Mm. Okay, very very good point. Alex Kaba, let me come to you. Achike, we'll come back to you. Alex Kaba, why is it that some people are not uh, arrested, like the, um, the, 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 the former governors in Lagos State? And we know that all of them have questions to answer. Well, what is your take on that? Yeah, what I would tell you is that uh, uh, what about one? Before I address the one of Lagos State, the fact that they did not arrest somebody, then you leave it a open season for anybody to go and steal and all that. But don't forget that uh, many of these governors, the ones that they have their case uh, prove, uh, proven, some of them are in jail today. Some of them are be arrested, and some some of them are on bail. Many of the governors are in bail, on bail. Even this one that you are talking about, uh, the ex governor of Lagos State, actually. He was also uh, uh, charged with uh, with uh, not with some crime, and uh, he was acquitted. Mm. Many people seem to forget that. So it is not to just uh, lay accusation alone. You have to prove the accusation. So that is why I'm saying that you see we can be on the social media and we can level allegations. This were level against uh, the governor of uh, the ex governor of Lagos State. By the way, he has been. He has been out of power for such a long time. But don't forget that he was tried during the regime of or the admission of uh, ex president Jonathan. And it was yes. a All right. All right. Let me let me go uh to Chike. There's a question I want to ask Chike. Um so Chike, uh there are some people who are saying on social media that uh, I know you are from Newe that Ikemba will be smiling wherever he, he is today about uh, the slap what is your take on 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 uh, on the reaction of um um bianca so so because because she could have you know she could have escalated the situation instead of escalating it i don't actually have a, both of them are based on the same product so they are getting themselves lower in public for people to not know who they are i don't have a problem with that mm. They reacted to show people who they are. Mm. Mm. I don't have any problem with that. They are better of the same way that's not today. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chike. Let, let's go to Eze Christian. He's just joining us. Eze Christian, uh, welcome. Um, yeah. Tell us where you are joining us from and um, what is your take on, on today's uh, stories? Dr. Damages, good evening, uh, sir. How, how are you, man? Yeah, hey, uh, fine. Thank you okay. for many years. I've been uh, longing to speak with you. I've been enjoying your your shows right Thank from you. when you were in uh, reporter. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, my brothers. Good evening, sirs. I my name is Eze Christian. I am from Enugusa. I've been enjoying the show from my brothers all over the world. Where, where are you? Are you in Enugu or are you outside Enugu? Where are you? I am, Enugu, I am in Enugu right now. Okay, Enugu okay, right good. Did, did you hear the slap from, uh, from did the slap get to Enugu? I mean, did, did you? <laughs> Man, it was, it was the resounding one. I had it. <laughs> <laughs> from my house. From my house, I had the slap. I, I had it. imagine that. You know, I can imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sounding word. I had it. And all of us, the, the good thing here, all of us in, in, in fact, all of us in Nigeria, 
will enjoy that slap. <laughs> yes, yes, every, everybody in Nigeria, you see, some people, we're even ready. We're even ready to go and give that woman a gift. Like, you need the right thing to, to give that woman that slap. Because these politicians, I don't know what, what is wrong with them. I don't know what they are thinking. Imagine, imagine the, the swearing was going on. The swearing was going on. At that point in time, no one supposed to move. I mean, everyone supposed to wear being, where where your uh, everyone is. But she she got up because she knows that nobody talks when she talks in Anambra street. Mm. You need to see how those touts, how those touts she deployed to collect money from people. You need to see how they behave. That is the way she behaves in Anambra. There was this man, I, I forgot his name. The man was a former commissioner. In, in Anambra State. The man came all the way from Canada and he was appointed a commissioner in Anambra State. I can't remember his name. When the man saw what was going on in Anambra State, the man said, I cannot be party to this. I cannot be party to this, what is going on in Anambra State. How can you just bring in Taos? Taos will be in the in, 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 a, in a motor park collecting money. Taos will see women hawking, hawking pure water. You'll be collecting money from them. You will see Okada riders, you will be collecting money from them. You will see uh, motorboys, you will be collecting money from them. The guy said, no, there are modern ways to, let us modernize this. They tried to kill that guy. The guy came all the way from Canada. The guy said, no, I cannot be here. The guy has to escape back to Canada. Mm. Okay. So the, 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 if you look at these people, come to Enugu here, Enugu where we are, even our governor here, come to Gariki, Gariki where I stay in Gariki, you think that this, these are not human beings. You will be eating with dirty. You will see dirty everywhere. You cannot do anything. And people are paying for people to take all this trash away. But they are not doing anything. Mm. They are not doing anything. They do. They behave like if to say that they are God. Look at the man in Ebony State. Mm. The man in Ebony State, he tried. He tried yeah. very well. In infrastructure. But there's, tried. A there's a difference between building things and, and running a, an efficient and... and uh, civilized governance. You know, you don't have a government system where a governor will do whatever they like, or the wife of the governor will do whatever they want they like because they are building an airport. That's not that's that's not acceptable. We that's have true. to go beyond that. But um, yeah. uh, as a as a hold on, okay, let's let's get it fine, Chuku, to join us and let's hear because this the idea of this this show is to get people the chance to speak. Um, I don't want to come and hear my view or you know that's not the point. The point is to hear from everybody and then people will learn from each other too. Um, okay, I think I think he dropped. Um, I don't think he's still with us. Um, okay, so uh, as we continue, yeah, continue because I I don't think I got. Oh, okay, okay. I think I think the youth, the youth of this country, I think they are waking up. Things are, things are changing. In fact, coming of Buhari, people say that Buhari came to bring hardship in Nigeria. I said no. That Buhari came to open people's eyes. Mm. Our eyes are now open. Mm. Our eyes are now open. We are beginning to see these people for what they are. Mm. Imagine, how can you just come into a town? You see what, what is going on in the town. The gota in Nigeria, there is nowhere in Nigeria, including Abuja, where our gota is working. No gota is working in Nigeria. Mm. If it rains, all the gota blocked. But when you go to other countries, you will see when they want to do their gota, the gota will be very, very big. So that nothing can ever block that. Mm. But the quota is not working here. Nothing works. Okay, the day before yesterday, we had a power outage. The whole of Nigeria, the whole of Nigeria, the power, there was power outage. In fact, two, two times in a day. Two times in a day. And not, nobody was saying anything. No explanation whatsoever. Even if you try to ask what is happening, they will, say, they will ask you to keep quiet. Oh, let, let, me, Eze, Eze, let me just remind you that uh, Buhari sent a statement from London saying that he's sorry that there was no there was no power and no no fuel nothing you know he somebody wrote a statement for him so so just so you know I I hope you saw that statement my my brother I pity that man I pity I pity that Ukori called Buhari you, you know the other they called Ukori <laughs> yeah I think I, so I pity I pity I pity that man. Mm. I, I pity him. I, I, I know that the man is even praying. Mm. I know the man is even praying. Let his stand your lap so that he will just go home and go and relax. Mm. All but right. What he's seen. <laughs> okay. yeah. as, as a, hold on, hold on, okay? Um, okay. Um, um, 
Alex Kaba, let me come back to you. I, I have to get somebody out so that um, more people can join. We can only take six people at the same time. So Alex Kaba, okay. there's something that Eze talked about now that is important. He talked about uh, the, the, the people, young people are waking up. That people are. We keep hearing that that people at home are waking up to uh, the fact that these things are not normal. This is not how things should be. Um, do you do you see that kind of um, signs that people are waking up? Um, at home. Uh, I, I have, uh, you know, the, the, during the end SARS, the youth actually came out to tell us that they are really aware of what is going on. Mm. But since that time, the Nigeria government has been doing everything to ensure that all the gains made by youth is reversed. Mm. So that is what is going on leading to 2023. Mm. So you can see that today, the, all the sacrifices all the sacrifices that all the youth made in that uh, answer protest, there have not been any gain from it. Mm -hmm. So today we are back to the old politics of uh, of uh, catch and carry and all that. That's what is going on today. Today, mm -hmm. so we are still very. Nobody has come out from the intelligentsia and the ruling class to say what can we do about this youth protest and what because there are so many, mm -hmm. but nobody has done anything about it. Mm. So and what they do is that if there's anything like uh, a protest by the youth, it's forcibly, it's forcibly crushed and suppressed. Mm. Mm. And that's why you see today that all the youth in the southeast, they are being, they are being uh, channeled to rebellion, mm. violent rebellion, because mm. there is an energy and you don't and you don't tap it into positive or it will go to negative. So mm -hmm. I'm negative in quote, because mm -hmm. one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist. Mm -hmm. So that is going on also in the Southwest and in the in, in all of Nigeria. Those uh -huh. energy are being channeled towards a rebellion that cannot be contained. You have it in the banditry, you have it in Boko Haram, you have it in the Eastern security network in the in the east and you also have it in the uh, Niger Delta uh, bombers in, uh, mm. in the Niger Delta. So those mm. are the things the youth, since the Niger government refused to use to harness them to the development of the country, those energy has been is now being dissipated to what some people would call uh, mm. negative. All right. All right. Alex, thank you. Uh, I'm going to come back to you, Chike. Uh, I want you to, I, I want to do something here. Um, I, I want you to address as a, as a Christian, okay? As I mentioned an issue now that um, the young ones are getting, are getting um, the, the people at home are getting um, more enlightened about what's going on. And, and there's an election coming up. And I know that, Chike, I know that you believe that um, it's of no use. It's of no consequence. There shouldn't be election um that there's something more important than an election but i, I want to i want you to talk to someone like like eze who is at home who i don't think probably Eze has not heard about your organization so so i want you to use this opportunity to talk to Eze, and not just Eze, people like him who are looking forward to 2023 with the hope that maybe we can change the trajectory of that country what, what can you say to him thank you um, I, I, I wanted to respond to what he said. Okay. Because being aware of what is going on without a plan is worse than anything. You have a plan of have to change things before we, when you are aware of it. Nigeria is designed to be doing working exactly what it is working based on the Nigerian constitution. If you think that you get angry because they are, you know what is going on, the next governor will come in and do worse than that. Because the constitution guarantees the governor immunity. You don't have control over him. And at, at, um, INEG is the one that selects who becomes your governor. No matter what your vote, your vote counts. For, uh, for example, Buhari was voted out the last time around. Even the two, the first one, um, he came in. He didn't win that vote. Even the INEC commissioner then have admitted that he didn't win. And the one with Atiku, Atiku won him hands down. But he won okay, okay, so 
So Chike, go go straight to the point so that we can get other voices. There are people who are trying to join us. Okay. And and it should also be audible a bit. It should yeah. also be audible. A bit. Okay, come closer to the mic uh, to the so that they can hear you. Chike, I can hear you, yes. but yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So the point is knowing exactly what the problem is. The problem is the Nigerian constitution, the way it's written. It's written for people to get power. The more power you get, the more it's easy to manipulate you. So until you shut down that elect that, that constitution, the people that want to enslave you will continue until you don't have any power. All right. So go ahead. Saying is that the next election will be shut down. And once you shut it down, you shut the constitution down. People will then decide what the constitution will be. Because that constitution is a military decree, which we are renewing its life every four years we have an election. So if we shut the election down, the constitution is down. That All is right. you need to work on now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, as they stay with us, I'll come back to you. I want to ask you a question about this uh, idea of not having an election. What you think? And okay. Okay. I mean, because okay. you represent people at home. Let me go to God's in uh, America. <laughs> uh, welcome. Where are you? And um, and what is your take on what's happening today? Uh, good evening. I'm from uh, Morocco. You are from Morocco or you are in Morocco? I'm in Morocco. Okay, just, just checking because if you are from Morocco, we we need to talk uh, about. <laughs> okay, what's the, you're watching us from Morocco. Well, welcome. That's amazing. I didn't know that. Go ahead. What are you doing there? Uh, I'm working here. Okay, good, good. So, what what is your take on? Are you from, where are you from in Nigeria? I'm from Medu State, Benin City. But you 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 saw the events of today and and. Were you, yeah, yeah. Were you excited? I, I was so excited. In fact, it made me feel good. You know, I wish, I wish, I wish such a thing can continue. You know, to be happening every day that Nigeria. I think there will be a change or changes. You, you, in that are you talking about the slapping or the EFCC arrest? Which one? You know. Stop. No, the, I'm talking about this now. Forget about the EFC. Nigeria, <laughs> Nigeria government is like the, 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 yes, man. Forget about the constitution. Nigeria government is like the Alibaba, the forty thieves. And it, it's meant for some kind of people. Forget about the arrested that uh, former governor. So with time, it will see come out. You know, Nigeria constitution. Uh, you know what they do. They don't, you know, they are just somehow, somehow. In fact, we don't really it's just like this makes me to remember what. Fela Kuti said in those days, you know, people fear they don't want to die, they don't want to know they they are figure picking and never marry, not this kind of thing. So those are the things. That's why I respect Fela more than any other artist in that you know, all those musicians in that Nigeria. What mm. Fela said those days is still happening today. Understand? Mm. So mm. like that Nigeria constitution for me, I just take it as a joke, it's a clap, you know. Mm. Uh, yes, sir. They don't, they don't, they don't abide by the law. The governors, the president, all of them, they break the law. You know, they don't do what. Can anybody go and arrest or you know arrest the government or say uh, this president Buhari? The way Buhari is doing now, uh, doing many, many kind of things. Can they, you know, it, but in other Western countries, they can just, you know, ah, uh, no, look at all those Mali, look at Sudan, look at what they. Are. I don't know what Nigeria is still waiting for. For me, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Eze, let me come back to you, and uh, because I have to let Chike go so that other people can join us. Um, okay. So, so Chike is saying that there shouldn't be an election because the constitution is faulty or not, um, not going to produce any any uh, outcome, better outcome, no matter how many times you try. It. So, for if you say that to people at home, you are in Enugu now. If you say that to people at home, what would be the reaction? Uh, uh... That will be an invitation of uh, anarchy. Yes, asking there should not be an election. If we, if we, we are inviting trouble. No, that will not be the solution. We, we actually have there is a constitution, but what is affecting us here is impunity, impunity of the leaders. There is constitution. We have the constitution. It's there. Okay. okay. And we have every other thing 
that will make this country work. But impunity. And again, one other thing that the leaders are using to destabilize people is hunger. Hunger. Imagine in an election that you are giving somebody 500 naira to go and vote for you. Uh -huh. You now, you now, if you are coming to Nigeria, Dr. Damages, you are coming, you are in Nigeria now to vote, and somebody wants to give you 500 naira to go and vote. I know you and I will not accept that money. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we know that we are above that 500 naira. 500 naira is nothing to us. Mm -hmm. But since they have reduced the poor masses to abjectivity, abject mm -hmm. poverty, mm -hmm. that the people cannot survive without these small, small crumbs they are getting from the politicians. You, that is where the problem is. Mm. But if we can be able to see how we can create a kind of opportunity for our people, then you see that people can now feed themselves very well. Mm. People can now feed themselves very well. You know that in that election, even if you are giving me, like in, 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 it happened in Anambra State, they were giving some, one, one woman one, uh, 5,000 naira. The woman said no. Mm -hmm. Why would that woman say no? Because she know that she's above that 5,000 naira. Mm -hmm. That she can make that five thousand naira in her shop or where she works, mm -hmm. okay. So if if we we see how we create opportunity for our young people, for even our elderly people, see how they can be able to be gainfully. Uh, 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 okay, there is not unemployment, uh -huh. but me I, my I, myself in my village, I do create this um a, a farming. I have a, I have a pig farm where I put some people who are working. And some of those guys who are working for me there, uh, once in a while, they will be getting money. Mm. Okay, uh, uh, that, that small thing they are getting from that farm will assist them in whatever they want to do. Mm. Uh, uh, and again, uh, they know that these are things they expect from politicians. They expect road, they expect electricity, and they expect water. Mm. So coming to collect five uh, five hundred naira or one thousand naira from them will not take them anywhere because they know that they are already getting more than that from me mm. so right. you see that now they have been empowered mm. thank you thank oh, okay. you Eze. chike um respond to him and then i'll let you go so that I'll, I'll bring in more people uh chike hold on let me let me unmute you because you have sound and noise around you okay go ahead if you have read the constitution you know that the poverty the lack of road the lack of water the lack of electricity, all of them flow from the constitution. So too, the poverty, all of them flow from the constitution. You are not great. South Africa had the best type of constitution we had before Mandela came. There was a matter of anarchy where it was frozen for a new constitution to be in order to be achieved. That is what we are asking for in Nigeria. If the election goes on, that will not happen. But if the election goes, doesn't go down, this uh, constitution must shut down so that an, if one that is people friendly, the people may will come up. The one we have now is designed to enslave everybody for the full and period. All right, Chike, thank you so much. We will have this conversation in subsequent episodes of this show, but um, thank you for joining us. And uh, let me lay you out and then let uh, some other people in who are just uh, coming in. If I you, welcome to the show. If welcome. I thank you very much, Dr. Damish. Can you tell us where you are? And, uh, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, can you tell us where you are joining us from? And... Um, where are you from in Nigeria? I'm in Omoba, face to Onisha. Onisha. Right oh, now. you are in Onisha. Did you hear that slap that happened in Oka? Oh, I witnessed it. <laughs> you witnessed it? You mean you were yes. there at Oka? So what, what yeah, is there, there. People, people in Onisha, what, are they, what were they saying about that? Well, there's say that it's good they like it they enjoyed it you know why why i'm saying this because in the past last was it last year beginning of last year uh a more actually uh used the wrong word to address kk riders in Monica here 
there was a time they went to the government's house uh, to protest and to tell them that the task, the abode, and intimidation that is even from them, that is much. Then the woman replied them and said, anyone who does not like that should go and pack his keke until they finish their own tenor and then they bring it back. That alone weakened their spirit and went home with that. Okay? And then, seeing what today, a lot of people were saying, yeah, that serves her right. And uh, if you the comment, you will see a lot of people calling her onion matcha and uh, mm. senseless. And of course, if you see what happened, she stood up for where she was and went to meet somebody who is sitting on her own. Mm. If she has been addressed here, that would not have happened. She would have just stayed in her own lane and the woman would be on her own lane. Mm. So what happened today is it's almost like everybody say, yeah, we expect that this will happen at least because she deserves to be embarrassed. Mm. For my own this, I respect that man uh, to life a uh, lot. Mm. What about the arrest of the former governor? What, what is your take on that? What are people saying in Anisha? But uh, okay. not what she did is right or wrong. I think because oh my god, everybody likes me, including me. And mm. hello, mm. yeah, we can hear you now. Oh, Are you hearing? Hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. All right, um, if I use line is, is bad now. So, so if I if I we can get you back in. Let Let's see if we can talk to somebody else. Um, okay. Um, Eze, let me come back to you. Um, okay. Yeah, I like uh, to hear from people at home, not from Morocco and other uh, this uh, America. Okay. Uh, yeah, but, but I'll, I'll come back to you, Gustin. Don't worry. <laughs> go ahead. If I Eze, okay, yeah, go ahead. Eze. Okay, sir. Like like uh like I said, the uh, your like teacher said no. We we sh we should hold an election. People should be allowed to choose whom they want to govern them. Mm. Yes, but um, I I know, I know Nigerian youth because uh, in our in our uh, Nigeria here, youth are doing whatever. They are trying their best in order to take over from these old cargos. Mm. They are trying. I know there are things going on. Mm. Because people cannot just uh, continue to to see and watch and see things going wrong. It's not mm. something they cannot that, that cannot be solved. Mm. These things can actually be, be solved. Mm. Okay. Mm. So um, um uh, okay. Another thing I want to add add to, to us here. Uh, I have some um some classified information, even written and all that that policemen. Nigerian policemen are going on strike on 26th of this month. Mm. I don't know whether you have heard that. Yeah, yeah, it's in the news, yeah. yeah poli although police authority denied it that um, it is not true. But that is not true. My friends who are policemen, I've called them, they said yes, that I should not listen to IG. Nigerian government, they are known for lying. That 26th of this month, okay, there is a... Um, um, but are you, are, you worried, are you worried about... I thought some people actually... Uh, feel that um especially in the southeast that um they are better off without the police what do you think no no that they they are misinformed no okay. They, okay. you cannot say you don't need police in in the southeast because just like i said before you say you don't need police in the southeast you are still inviting anarchy you know that everybody will be on this one just like what is happening mm -hmm. like the issue of unknown government Mm. Uh, uh, unknown government now we now have uh, like uh, four types of unknown government mm. yes we we have political unknown government we we have unknown government of the other unknown government then we have your unknown government in the villages then we have your unknown government if you and your girlfriend is having problems or you want to pursue another woman uh, <laughs> apart from your distance then another guy will now send his own unknown government just like this man, uh, the CEO of uh, Auto East in Enugu here. Mm. CEO of Auto East. I know when you, you know when he, he was killed. Auto yeah. East in Enugu here. The man, mm -hmm. I, I, I learned that it was in, uh, 5 thousand naira that was given to the guys that went and killed the man. Wow. Yes, and uh, the other guy, Professor Ndubisi, the man from Bo, 
Yes, that was also killed uh, in in Enugu here. Imagine. So when you say you don't, you don't, you can you now will be better off without police in the southeast. I say that is not true. Mm. That is not true. It is okay, not thank, true. Thank, you, thank you, thank you, Aziz. Mm, thank you, Aziz. It's important that we hear from people, different people. Let me come to you because um, Godson, I, I will have to let you go. But let me let me ask you. And uh, when you look at Nigeria from Morocco, um, do you do you see um, what do you see? Uh, do you think that what are we missing? Why why is Nigeria why is Morocco better than Nigeria? Because you... as, yeah, as mm -hmm. for yeah, now we have good infrastructure, twenty four hours light, electricity, good road, good government. You know that this is just a monarch government. You know the king is not president, but they have a prime minister. You mm -hmm. know. When anybody, the other day, the former prime minister, he went to jail because of little money that he hit. You know, just so little. He went to prison mm -hmm. and he went to serve. Mm -hmm. You understand? So like here now, they have law. Nobody above the law here. You mm -hmm. know? So like here now, you know, every, he's so free, you know? Everything, all those social amenities is free. The way government makes it, it makes it so easy here. So like that Nigeria kind of life is somewhat bad. Um, these days I do I do wonder if they can still see good good leaders like uh, Mandela, Nancy Mandela. Uh, if Africa can produce such a leader, all those uh, Thomas Agara, all those uh, Emeka Cabran, mm. all those uh, Samadora Masha. So I do I don't know if Africa can still produce such a leader today. Mm. Thank you so much, Godson. I will have to let you go. We are actually going to round up in, in about seven minutes. So I will go around and, and people who are still here will you know, give me their final thoughts on the events of the day. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Let me come back to you. Um, if, if I, I want to, I want to, I want to hear from you if you can. Okay. Um, if I is having internet problems. So let's get that. Uh, we can now. Okay, give us um, your roundup. No, my brother, for the police issue, we need the police. You can't just say we don't need the police because uh, you don't like fear of them. There are a lot of good police people, men and women in Nigeria, and they are working very hard to protect us. That one is sure, you know. Mm -hmm. um, for the election, <clears throat> you know, before Saludo was elected, they were saying no election, no election, no election. If you keep going that lane and say no election, trust me, you might end up, Nigeria might end up electing, I don't know, uh, Isa Pantami as a president. Mm. Because that that minority that are going to vote are going to vote whoever they like. Mm. And you will be on the background kicking and saying no election, dissolve the constitution, do this, do that. You know, for now, I know it's not working perfect. We have to keep working in the background. This is not the time to just unilaterally say no election. It's not going to work. You okay. know? All right. You can, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let's go to Ostino. Ostino, okay. welcome to the show. Thank you. Wow. So um, did, you, um, did you watch the news today? What happened in Anambra State? Yes, uh, I was opportune to listen to what happened. I mean, uh, just happy and excited that we have a, a new governor right now. Mm. And hopefully we can begin to solve our problems, you know. Um, just like I keep on telling people, you know, let's start from home first. Let's begin from our place first to start fixing the mm. country. Mm. Like the agitation that is going on is quite good anyway, but then that's not that's not the problem that we are having. Mm -hmm. If we can, the people of Anambra State, if we can start fixing our place, um, you know, make Anambra State an economic and uh, technology and industrial hub to start with, so that other people from outside the world can visit Anambra State and see what we have. We do have the human capital, you know, in Anambra State. All we need is, uh, you know, is a good leader to direct the affairs of Anambra State. That's it. And we see that we be, you know, we we be the the, the champion, you know, in in Nigeria and in the world as a whole. Mm. Now you talked about the swearing in of uh, Saludo. You didn't talk about the slap, did you? Are you saying you didn't see the slap? Well, I'm. 
Yeah, I, I saw what happened, but I mean, I cannot condone, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, you don't condone violence. You are, you are, you're a civilized man. I condone violence. Both mm. of them were at wrong anyway, because, I mean, for one thing, you just left your seat and start going towards somebody else. Mm. And the other person also would have, you know, be the mature person, you know, like, mm. You don't. You didn't have any right to lay your hands on anybody. So mm. both of them were at wrong. You know, mm. I'm not. I'm not in support of anything. I mean, something like that that happened. Mm. You know. what, what about what about the arrest of uh, of the former governor? I received that as a shock. You know, that's that's one thing with Nigeria. I can't believe it. I mean, and for them to do it publicly, I mean, they could have invited the governor. You know, they didn't have to. You know, go and arrest him publicly at the airport. They could have invited him, and then then see what you know. That's one thing with Nigeria. Anytime an Igbo person um, is trying to you know do something, and you see Nigeria, you know, see Nigeria come and shine. I mean, other governors like the governor of um, uh, one of the Lagos states. You know, all of them they they embezzled money. It's not the only Anambra state governor that embezzled money. I'm not I'm not saying that he embezzled money. I mean. I'm just saying, what is the reason? Why did they have to arrest him at the airport? Mm. They should have invited him first and mm. see whether he will, you know, he will respond. Mm. You know, so I, I don't like, I don't like the tone of that, of that. I didn't like it at all. Mm. Mm. All right, Ostino, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we have less than three minutes left. So let me go back to Ifanyi, who is in on this. Ifanyi. I wanted to hear your view about the arrest of the governor. Um, what, what are people saying in Onisha? Okay, okay, hold on. Let me let me unmute you if I I think uh, your your mic is me. Okay, go, okay. go ahead. Let me, uh, let me start with what people are saying here in Onisha. Though mm -hmm. the news came late here, but they were all like they were in support of that. They like it. Mm -hmm. But this is my take. Like the last person that spoke now. Okay, if I knew we're having difficulties uh, hearing you, indeed. maybe the, the, the new governor will start by putting good internet. In uh, I like what you okay. Go ahead. Say, yeah, uh, the thing is that should have invited him. as well. We are suffering here, it's part of the hotel. But what I'm saying is this. They should have invited him. They should have at least given him that respect. Despite the fact that this man uh, did a lot of bad things, yeah. he covered it up with uh, this airport uh, accomplishment. Okay? But like I was saying, sometime last year and last year, this man just came out of nowhere and started tasking people. I mean, my market precisely, I sell a laptop there. Mm -hmm. Uh, he started tasking people, closing down shops, blocking with security men in collaboration with market leaders, and tasking people unnecessarily, telling them that they must pay. Pay what? What are we paying for? It's a task. Task of what? It's if you don't pay, you come to your can explain. Okay, if I thank you, thank you so much. Uh, and people who are not happy about that. Mm. All right. If mm. I if I we have to we have like a minute, a minute left. Um let me let me promise you guys that well, I will do this again. I will do this again. Mm. All right. All right, we, we are not we are not hearing you fine, but thank you. Thank Doctor, you. Can I, Doctor, please, yeah, please, yeah. Can I just say one thing? Yeah, yeah. Something? Okay, go say something. Yeah, please, uh, the the Willie Obiano, Willie Obiano was invited to EFCC last year. He had the invitation letter is with him. He mm. was escaping today before he was arrested. Okay. Yeah. Yes. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Before I reacting to you, Ostino, on the comment section, um, they they were is wondering. That? I'm telling Ostino that a lot of people were reacting to what he said. That uh, just like what you are saying, is it that he was invited? It wasn't like he didn't know that he they needed yes. his attention since, yeah. since so, last year. Since uh, last year, yes. yeah. So, since so that um, the yes, idea that he's, he's yes. leaving the day of the swearing in, it shows that there's something going on. Anyway, but um, we are.
totally out of time. Thank you very much for joining everybody. This is just the first time we are going to do this, you know, maybe twice a week. Uh, on Saturday, we are going to do another one. So if you can join us, please join us. We will put it up and advertise it on all the social media platforms. But thank you. I appreciate all of you. Uh, thank you, Alex Kaba. I know you are gone now. You were the one keeping uh, hanging out with me before everybody joined. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, I will see you guys again uh, on Saturday. Sometime on Saturday, I will give you the time. Um, stay cool. And we'll talk next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye, yeah. <laughs> everyone. Okay, bye-bye. You're fine. Bye-bye. Yes, Mike, I'm sorry we couldn't get to you.